Hello, mortals, and welcome back to uh, another episode of season two of Dice X Machina. We had a little break last week, uh, but our, our cast is mostly here. Uh, Omega is a little underweather, so they are not here, but everybody else is here, and we're excited to have everybody. We're excited to welcome back Ashlyn. Welcome back to the show after a, a week you. off. Of, you've had two weeks off for you. I know. It feels yeah. good to be back, though. Callie is ready to rock. Callie is ready to rock and maybe ready to roll. We'll see how it goes. Well, I mean, there's dice, so you will be rolling. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah. uh, just as you know, at the top of the show, a couple of notes to give everybody. Uh, well, let's, let's do uh, round the table first, say hello, and then I'll get into the top of the show spiel. Uh, let's start off tonight. I'm going to go in the order I see everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and say hello to our newest face on the show. Uh, hello, Joy. How are you? Hello. I had to mute myself earlier because I feel a sneeze coming. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like waiting for it, but like, hello. Please don't take me for a <laughs> um, But yes, hi, I'm uh, Marifine, and I am a rogue satyr. And the last thing I remember I did was we went to a place and ate sushi. <laughs> and now you can now you can feel free to sneeze. And also, I want to say your yes. jacket looks really cool. Uh, oh, thank you. It's a Scarlet Witch uh, jacket. I from... thought it might be. I thought I had the lines, and I wasn't sure. I was glad yeah, to that. I had I to have it. That was perfect. Uh, let's say hello to Jordan. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Lystandros, who is also a rogue satyr. Uh, but he, I am an arcane trickster and uh, a, a gambler who formerly lost a lot and now just gambles because he, you know, you get into a habit after doing that for a ridiculously long time. And, uh, yes. Excellent. Actually, Mara finds a the details. bard. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I messed. I, I think that that was, yeah. Mara finds a bard, which, but I, she's very roguish as a bard. She's, sure. Yeah. They're all in kind of the same category. Yeah. As, as someone who played Velma for her three seasons of the broken back, I can definitely vouch for how, how roguish a bard can be if given the right circumstances. And uh, speaking of the broken pack, let's say hello to our returning cast member who we love in the door. Hello, <laughs> hello, Ashlyn. I always called you Allie as a combination of your real name and your character name. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I almost introduced myself as Tuturu, so hey, there we go. <laughs> hey, everyone. Oh, <laughs> Callie, I'm uh, I'm Ashlyn, and I play a Leonin cleric. Wait, what? See, there we go. I play a Leonin uh, named Callie, and she is a Icono Icono class. Um, she was a um, she was a follower of Erebos in season one um, for reasons that you wouldn't quite expect. If you haven't seen season one, you can watch that and figure out why. Um, if you have, you know why. And we're here. And she's a fighter. And she's the the one who's not afraid to speak her mind. She's she's cool. She's chill. Very nice. But she's she's the type of person who like grew up, you know, following the pack, always hunting with everyone, and is like, you know, you got to fend for yourself, right? So. That's Callie in kind of in a nutshell. And uh, yeah, she's going to find out uh, what she, uh, what everyone's been up to. Excellent. Uh, before we get in the show, we just have a couple of announcements at the top of the order, top of the lineup, top of the show. I'm going to find the right word eventually. Uh, we do have a goal. We're aiming for $250 an episode. Hitting that goal each episode allows us to continue to pay our amazing cast to do more shows like this and keep content like this on the air for the channel. Even if you can't afford to back us, we do appreciate when you said spread the word and share the show with your friends and family because bringing audiences in is also very helpful for us. Uh, as a bonus incentive, if we hit $250 tonight, we will unlock a special uh, exclusive for this show which is a live pool from an active Magic the Gathering deck that I will use. And then one of the cards that we'll pull will influence next week's episode. So we'll pull whatever we pull from the card deck will actually have an impact on the adventure. And we had it happen in some pretty big ways last season. We At one point, we, we I think we pulled Erebos. And so then Erebos appeared in the next episode. Uh, also, a tip of just $15 will allow you to send us a message, which we, which we will read live on the air. We call it a message from the gods or revelry, and we will do a little toast and we'll read your message and we'll all be very very happy to send us your goofy or heartfelt messages and we'll crush our fundraising goals all at once and now i'm going to hand it over to jordan for a couple of commercials we'd like to give a big thanks to our session sponsors roll 20 and hero forge for supporting us roll 20 gives you the feel of the tabletop 
virtually. Get access to great maps, tokens, sound effects, dynamic lighting, and more. Use exclamation point roll 20 in chat for info and type exclamation point hero forge in chat to check out the wonderful customization tool they've created we also have a partnership with Die Hard dice you can save 10 percent at Die Hard dice by using the code saving throw show at checkout use command exclamation point dh dice in chat for links and info and you can order uh you can order our friend critical bards dice set i tried to do that all pitchman like but you stumbled did. over thought, a few things, but I, I think I like got the gist of it, right? I thought I think you rolled like a solid like fifteen or sixteen in your presentation on your I'll on your take it. roll. Yeah. So, um, also, I want to remind my cast members that because we are sponsored by Roll Twenty, maybe uh, at some point soon, hop on into that Roll Twenty uh, screen so we can have that active during the show. In any case, I'm in. Uh, and uh, yes, yes, Ashlyn is the best. I see the cool um, map. It's really Ashlyn cool a sticker. Um, and uh, for everybody watching us on YouTube after the fact, thank you so much. Do us a solid, leave us a like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell, the whole nine yards. It really helps the show and the channel. And lastly, we have been recently soft launching our new Exploration Society fundraising tool on, co on coffee this month. Enter exclamation point coffee in the chat to check it out. On coffee, you can tip the show as much as you as, as you would regularly, but you can also join the society with a monthly tip amount. You will get the same great rewards as if you were a member of our Patreon, and you can unlock things like toast with your tips on coffee. Plus, coffee doesn't take a cut, so nearly 100% of your tip goes straight to the channel after PayPal, of course. But, uh, you know. Fees are fees. Um, and then that is it for the top of the show. So let us launch ourselves back in to the world Dice Ex Machina in the ancient Greek-esque world of Theros. Uh, we're, we're doing uh, Agent, uh, sorry, Episode 4, Agents of the Fates. When we last left our champions, they had successfully helped defeat a menacing water elemental that was terrorizing the coastline of Neolantan. Following that, they sought out the lair of the Gorgon to possibly satisfy some curiosities amongst members of the party. Unfortunately, they were unable to find any answers to their ongoing personal questions. What they did find instead was that the Gorgon had turned her lair over to the city as, an, as a shelter, a refuge for the people who had been suffering in the attack from the water elementals, a triage sensor, a place to hold the injured and the sick overnight. Uh, she made friends with, with Zindar and Marafine, who she did not know was traveling with uh, people who have been a thorn in her side uh, previously. We did learn that her attempt to pickpocket Lysandros was more out of a petty squabble or personal debt than any actual intent of long ongoing malice just kind of a hey he messed up my business i want to kind of rub it to him a little bit the wrong way but it was a side of the gorgon that we haven't really seen as much of before and she perhaps had a bit more tenderness to her than you expected hmm. Following that, uh, the party continued to ignore and ignore and ignore the uh, the signs of a black cat that was uh, that was dancing around them and avoiding them. She, that cat has shown up now and is ready for a story. <laughs> yes. Uh, eventually, uh, finding the black cat, find, starting to follow the black cat back to the home of Kia, mm -hmm. the sage, uh, the the oracle of Clothis. The party went to hire a boat and found the familiar face, that of Salypso the Nyxborn, who gladly and happily sailed them to Melitus, while perhaps also engaging in a smuggling operation of her own that she was happy to use her friends as cover for. <laughs> uh, having succeeded in that, the party arrived at the home of Kia the Sage, who greeted them warmly, seemed to expect them, was a little bit prickly. They hadn't gotten the cat symbol earlier than she thought she would like them to have. Still arrived, she explained to them, showing them a parchment in the celestial language that was only readable by Callie and Zindar. And Callie, I think I forgot to tell you this detail. When you were reading the language of Celestial, you actually felt very sick and woozy, almost like it was too much knowledge for your body to handle. And uh, and you fail at Constitution Tech. That's why it was like that. But uh, ah. Marfine and... Lysandros could not read it at all because those characters can't read Celestial. Mm -hmm. You have it on your languages, so you could read it, but it was just too much for your brain to process. And yeah. Zindar seemed to be fine reading it. Mm -hmm. uh, Kia then went on to explain that the 
water elementals who attacked the city were the first wave of archons that were able to escape from their hidden, uh, we'll say, prison in the underworld that Clothis has been watching over for millennia at this point. They were released during the upheaval first of the uh, Xenagos uprising, but then fully rested free during the situation involving Phoenix trying to usurp the powers of Clothis, who was using her power of fate to tie them into this cell. So when her power was weakened by Phoenix, a few of these creatures got out. They have now threatened to rise up and reconquer Theros as they did so long ago before the rise of the current generation of gods. And the last thing that you were told by Kia was that the only thing that could defeat something older than the gods were weapons that were older than the gods themselves. Oh, sorry. I've been holding that statement for longer than I thought I would. I thought it was going to be like a few. It seems like it's been two weeks since I said that. Um, but. Oh, yeah. We, we were just sitting here waiting for you to like follow it up. I mean, it's sort of it sounds intriguing, definitely. But I mean, we don't have weapons like that. I I know. I, I just I thought you, at least the two of you would appreciate showmanship. I'm look, I'm. Oh, no, definitely. Well done. Absolutely. We were just, like, I figured there had to be a follow-up coming, right? Yeah, there is. I just kind of thought you would, like, have questions or things. I didn't know that I had. Okay. Um, Callie, you've been very quiet. I mean, well, I'm just, I'm just so tired of gods. Where, where, where can we find, like, the weapons? Uh, weapons older than gods themselves. I mean, it does make sense. The gods aren't the end all be all of our, of Theros. I mean, we've been allowed, we, uh, we non godlike creatures and beings were here first. And uh, us having weapons would make sense. Where would we find them though? Well, that's the fun thing about knowing a friend who is a fan of prophecies and she kind of rubs her hair back real quick and scratches her head and then um i can anyone who wants to can make a perception check i want to i want to too everyone can you get a perception check you get a perception check oh actually um, uh, oops uh, <laughs> yeah uh, it doesn't help you too much right now, Marfine, because you got a five and a four. <laughs> However, uh, we did actually, one of the things that you get in the Theros setting is a supernatural gift, which essentially is a feat in the D&D system. However, it's kind of a free feat that you get at the beginning of the game. Uh, it's, a, it's, 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 it's supposed to reflect the fact that your characters are champions of the gods. And uh, so uh, Joy actually took the observant feat as her character's supernatural gift. And we hadn't discussed that mm. on the show yet, so I wanted to talk about it a little bit. We also leveled up to level seven uh, two oh, episodes yeah. ago as a result of fighting the first Archon, the Water Elemental. Uh, does it, did anybody get anything cool or fun at level seven that you want to share? I got that sweet, sweet extra D6 in my sneak attack Ooh. and evasion. So I am, How many do you have now? I have 46. Wow, 46 so. dice. That's a lot of dice. Oh, yeah. 46 dice. Yeah. You heard me <laughs> right. A lot of counting. It's going to take yeah. a long time every time I attack. Yeah. Yeah, I actually got something as well for my features and traits. I just have to find it. Um, you got something involved because because you're a cavalier, which means you you have mounted combat. And I think you've got something involving your when you're on a mount. Yeah, there it is. Features and traits. Um, so now I have uh, this thing called... Warding Maneuver. Um, if you are a creature you see within five feet is hit by an attack, I can essentially roll a D8 as a reaction and add the number rolled to the creature's AC against the attack. So if I'm wielding a melee weapon or a shield, I can do this. And if, if the attack still hits, uh, the target has resistance against the attack's damage. Nice. And yeah. then, Joy, I don't know if you know, if, did you get anything cool with a bard at this level? 
I don't know where to find that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if you go to your character sheet on D&D Beyond, uh -huh. uh, if you click Features and Traits, it might be uh -huh. there. But why don't you tell us what you get as, a, as Observant? So you can click on Feats and read that and let us know what that means. And that way, that's uh, It oh. increases my, in, I'm assuming, my Arcana and Animal Handling? You get... By what? Four spells at... at uh, Level seven. Yeah, you get more spells. That's the big thing for a spell cast is level seven is you get more spells to pick from. Uh, let me actually pop into D&D Beyond. I can tell you it's a little bit confusing if, you don't, if you're don't, you not used to it. Yeah, I was like, oh. I told you, that's, that's my bad for putting you on the spot. I should have told you ahead of time that you should know that. That's that well, to me. Uh, let me go ahead and look at it. I can tell you what you get as observant, which oh. is basically go to feats. Um, you increased your intelligence or wisdom score by one. So anything you had that was modified by those, you would get, oh, you haven't made the choice yet. But when you make that choice, all your stats that have that will pop up by one. And okay. then- um, <laughs> I was like, my, I looked and I saw INT next to Arcana. I was like, huh? But I see there's yeah. multiple of them because it's all the same trait. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, if, if you see a creature's mouth uh, while it's speaking a language you understand, you can read its lips. You can understand that, which is a really cool ability. Plus, you have a plus five bonus to your passive perception and mm -hmm. your passive investigation scores. So that's that's actually really good for when you're, you know, currently. I think that knocked your passive investigation up to seventeen, which is pretty good. And then your passive perception is now sixteen. So it gives you some cool, fun little goodies there. And then, yeah, I think I think Jordan's right. I think your big thing as a bar to level seven is getting a bunch more spells. I think most spellcasters tend to pop up to level five spells, I think, at this point. Yeah, sounds yeah, right. Sounds like wrong. <laughs> Someone in chat's going like, no, it's not. They're like yelling at me, and it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I like being yelled at. Everything is fine. Uh, <laughs> Everything so, is fine. I, I realized I kind of brushed over a small part of mine because I, I kind of just assumed people knew what evasion was, but there's no reason to necessarily assume that. So at level seven, I got the rogue ability evasion, which means that if there's an area of effect attack that like would let you make a dexterity save to take half damage, if I make the dexterity save, I take no damage. Oh, right. If I fail the dexterity save, I take half damage no matter what. So I'm just spry as hell and really good at jumping out of the way of things. Yeah, that's a really good. That's like that's the nice thing about rogues is like you're really hard to hit, and then when you hit, you know, you do all your damage in one attack, but it's a lot of damage when you. Oh yeah, it. fifth so. edition rogues like do a lot of damage and are hard to hit. Like they're yeah. surprisingly good combat characters. Yeah, they're very good. So, uh, speaking of of rogues and perception, what did you get in your perception check, Lysandros? I got an eight. Okay. Very good. So you all see her rubber rubber hair, and that's all you see. Um, that's fine. All right. Um, I am very preoccupied preoccupied with the black cat. That yeah, has, Arthur you know. is really loving Callie for some reason. <laughs> it's like Arthur reminds him, remind uh, Callie reminds her of someone that she knows for some reason that she can't <laughs> quite put her finger on. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, uh, she continues to lay it out, and she says, "Look, I know a lot about prophecy." but prophecies like to be vague. It's a thing they do. It's sometimes very obnoxious. I don't understand it. I think it's just sort of like a learning the quest is part of the quest sort of thing. But as I said last time, or actually a few moments ago, which felt like two weeks ago, but we don't need to get into that. There were four of you that were foretold. There's the Claw motioning to Kali, the Healer motioning to Zindar, the Seeker motioning to Maravine, and the Trickster motioning to Lysandras. And as the prophecy says, the four travelers will seek out the five kings. And there are five mortal kings that are representative of Pharos. There is the king of pride, the free king, the king underground, the king of the mighty, and the king of glory. And hmm. Seeking them out is the way to seek out the weapons that you need to defeat the Archons. Weapons that are hidden away, artifacts from an ancient time. All right. Now, I, I've got to ask, while we're here, before we get too deep into this whole thing, because, look, sure. I'm all for finding ancient weapons and, and killing pre-god beings that are uh, powerful and all that stuff. Sounds like a blast to me. It does sound great. I, I envy you. For an but look, 
I may not be the smartest guy around, but I'm no dummy when it comes to, I don't know, some of the ways of the gods and things like that. And if there's one thing that I know as, uh, you know, having something of a relationship with Phoenix is that even though he is the trickster god, all the gods are sort of tricksters when it comes down to it, especially when it comes to, you know, keeping their godhood intact. Now, certainly it sounds like we're going to be doing a favor by, like, finding these weapons and, you know, killing the other gods, but... You know, from what I remember, just picking things up, traveling around, the gods don't look too kindly to people who have god-killing weapons. How do we know that once we have these things, they're not going to turn on us? Well, I don't actually have a prophecy that says one way or the other how that goes. I just know that if you don't do this, the Archons will conquer and rule all of Theros. Hmm. Which they've done before, and so I know they could do it again very easily. But, so I guess it's up to you. Do you want to be concerned about gods ruling you in five to ten years, which they kind of already were doing? Or do you want to be completely enslaved by Archons? I don't know. I have, I've never been enslaved by Archons before. I'm not entirely sure I'm down to knock it before I've tried it. I mean, do you want the thing you were throwing a pebble at to really enslave you? Yeah, that thing didn't seem fun. And I drank a little bit of it. Did not get me buzzed, even a little bit. So, well, I think you have your answer. Here's hey, what sure. I'll say: I I come from a place where the people tend to be controlled by a few with power, not gods as you know them, but organizations. And I personally was skeptical of the power they wielded and the responsibility of the power they wielded, but. I did come to trust those that I fought alongside, and I put my faith in them. So, if you're asking me, no, I wouldn't trust the gods to, to be civil about things, because that's what the gods do, is be uncivil. But I would trust her, and she points to Callie, and I would trust her, and she points to Marafine, and I would trust him, and she points to Zindar, because those are your compatriots. And whatever you do together, I believe whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do. Well, sounds like a plan to me. And hey, maybe it'll be fun trying to dodge the gods if they do decide that they have to, uh, you know, bring a little bit of divine retribution on these god-killing mortals. Indeed. Hey. We've done it before. I mean, we seem to find ourselves running into the gods no matter what we do. Now that is a very good point. Myrfine, what do you think about all this? I think that... I don't know. I feel like someone is trying to tell me something, which is why I insisted we get on this boat. So I kind of... kind of an indifferent, but I also want to go on a certain path to be able to see what they're trying to say. Okay. Hmm. Well. Eh, I have nothing better to do. If the god wants to uh, try to cause any trouble with me, I say bring them on. I pity the gods. All right. Well, how do we find these kings? You know, I've known a couple kings in my day. In fact, I... Uh, was related to a king at one point, sort of. You know, it's all of a crazy thing. And they're they generally fun people. Hmm? Aren't you a king? Mm, yeah, I think I ducked that pretty successfully. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe in some weird legal sense or something like that, but I don't think so. Uh, but the important part is that if there's anything I know about kings is that I usually throw great parties and stuff like that. So if we're going to find five of them, I hope we at least get a couple of feasts in the process. What were the king's names again? There was the king of pride, the king, the free king, the king underground, the king of might, and the king of glory. <coughs> well, I'm have... leaning towards finding the free king or the glory king because they sound more fun, but... I don't know. Pride has a nice ring to it. Do do any of them ring a bell to any of us? Um, 
make a history check. Again. And as a reminder, we currently have. Let's say we have five rerolls. Uh, Dom, are these numbers accurate currently? Cool. Six nice. for the player. So definitely use those rerolls. I'll fix that there. And uh, while you are making a history check, I just want to say that while uh, while you're sitting there, uh, Kia does raise her glass and uh, start to begin a message from the gods, where she says. Coming from three phoenixes in a trench coat, uh, Lysandro <laughs> once told me he collects large instruments in his free time. What a massive liar! <laughs> and then, oh, wow. with wherewithal, says, "I just want to say that I hope the gods of Theros give you all their blessing. It is always a gift to enjoy this wonderful show with all these wonderful people." It, Cheers, y'all! Cheers. Well, I got a twenty-three on my history check. I keep accidentally hitting it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Secret advantage. <laughs> okay. Um, the first one you rolled was a 19. So, Let's so you go with need, that one. <laughs> yeah, you have it. Um, here's what I'll say. What did you get on your history check, Callie? Uh, we, we don't have to talk about it. It was... Um, okay. It was um, Callie's not sure she knows what a king is. Um, <laughs> we have a king of the, the pride... That's what I'm thinking right now. I'm like, well, we really have a matriarch, so it's a little different. Okay. She's mistaken it for chicken a la king. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll begin with Mara Fine. You remember that the Minotaurs who attacked your home mm -hmm. and sent you out on this journey to find answers and perhaps retribution seem to speak about their mighty king. And Lysandros, with a 23 personal history check, you have definitely heard satyrs whisper amongst themselves about the free king. The satyr who was destined to be king of the Skull of Vale, who rejected his birthright and went wandering as a gambler. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't know anything about any of these kings. Yeah, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, uh, I mean, all I can say is that whoever the free king is, he sounds like a fun guy. But, uh, hey, you know, if, if we can find any information about any of these, I, I guess we should go check it out. Um, one thing I want to say, um, Kia says as she puts her drink down and looks at Callie and goes, I might not be so specific about gender with the term of king. I mm. believe it's more of a concept. I don't know if all these kings are actually the rulers of a realm, per se, as opposed to rulers of a... Think of, think of it as a king in a metaphorical sense. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still not getting anything. Well, it sounds like one of you, and she glances past Lysandros when she says that and looks at Marafine. Sounds like at least one of you has a clue. Uh, I suppose you could continue to search, and she motions her hands around, and she has, you know, there are scrolls everywhere and she she you can tell and you remember from last time that she's madly writing things down all the time and keeping track of things keeping logs so there are things around here i i do write a lot of the histories of theros as i come across and maybe some other places that you might not want to read as much about it might confuse you quite a bit um um does, does the word spark mean anything to any of you okay good don't read any of the things on that wall then um but the rest of them Perhaps a little research, or you could ask about town or seek information out in whatever ways you choose to do so. And well, as, I don't as know all this myself. L Lysandro sidles toward the wall he was told not to read. And kind of, of course. Goes, glances sideways at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, uh, I'll let you have this without rolling. You... You don't recognize the languages that are on. They don't rec they, they seem like written languages because they're 
out of character, the best way I can describe it is their languages from other worlds. So their sure. language is that a person in Theros would not understand. Um, but you sense. definitely you definitely see the image of on one of the scrolls, you see the image of a red fist that is surrounded by it looks like fire, and then there's a marking of an eight, like an infernal eight on it. And then there's like a bunch of texts written there, but you can't really make out what it means. Sounds like a cool symbol to me. Hmm. So it seems like our best lead is with Marifine. Yeah, so I kind of remember some minotaurs raising a king, but I can't really understand or remember which king. Well, I, I mean, that's something to go off of. If we know that the Minotaurs have a king, then if we find Minotaurs, chances are that they'll know more about it. So, I mean, we knew this was going to be a long journey anyway, so why don't we just go... Uh, we, we would know, like, some of the general areas that, like, Minotaurs are more populous, right? Yes, and in fact, it's been two weeks, so I'll, I'll refresh. Let me, let, let me load up the, the name of it again. But there was actually, at one point, I can't remember who you asked... I, maybe it was the Gorgon. I can't remember, but Marfine, you asked somebody about the Minotaurs that um, attacked you and stuff. Like you kind of looked mm -hmm. for information about them, and you were told that kind of west of Akros, there were like two major realms of of Minotaurs, but that um, the people that you like, the kind of the Badlands was uh like the areas of phoboros which were the minotaurs that roamed and just like were like almost like gangs of lawless minotaurs and then there was also the labyrinth city of scophos which is where a little more civilized version of the minotaurs okay well we've got two main places where minotaurs tend to congregate and you know what I like to do when I'm trying to decide between two things, or actually a lot of different things, but two just makes it a lot simpler. And he pulls one of the coins from his horn. I mean, we could choose which way to go my way, unless someone has a better suggestion. I'm down for that. It's much better than trying to read through a bunch of books. And uh, Zindar is like, um, well, I, I guess that if that's how you think we should... We should do, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's how I think we should do everything. Random chance is like sort of my whole thing. And uh, as he says that, Lysandros kind of throws his coin up a little bit and then says, all right, you're going to represent Scofos, Callie. Call in the air. And he will flip. Whoops. I lost my headphones for a minute. And he <laughs> will flip the coin and say, call it in the air. And I'm going to roll a dice. And I want you to pick odd or even. And if you get it right, we go to Scophos. Otherwise, we go to the west, right? That was the other option? Yeah. Nice. E evens. And he flips the coin, and it comes down, and it lands. And, and it's Kelly yells, it. <laughs> and it, it lands on what I guess is uh, heads, the side that Callie called, if that's what she called. Because <laughs> oh. I realized that us saying odds or evens makes it a little harder for me to translate it to an in-world coin since I was rolling an actual I know, I dice. Think, I think, yeah. Uh, okay, let's do this what again. She... <laughs> evens is heads. So she, okay. What's that? Evens is heads. Evens is heads. Okay. Yes, and what did mana crypt rules. What did you say? <laughs> Phoboros or Scophos? Scophos. Okay, you're heading to Scophos. That's perfect. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so it is a bit of a, a slog from <coughs> Melitus to Scophos. You do have to go fairly north. Um, we're not gonna let I'm not gonna make the audience watch you travel uh, days and days and days through uh, through Scophos. Um, uh, uh, to Scophos from where you're at. Um, let's do a quick like travel montage, essentially. Uh, I want everybody to... Can we do like little walking motions and 
like yeah. gesture that we're doing stuff and think. Let's see. Um, yeah, because Kofos is like way up north. Like you're like you're essentially <laughs> going all the way to the tip top of the map. Um, roll. Now <laughs> roll survival check for me. All right, Callie can do that. Callie can survive. Should we all roll survival checks? Um, I'm gonna have roll. I'm gonna have Cal. I'm gonna have Callie roll for the first day. Callie is going to. Here's what we're gonna do to kind of instead of instead of having random encounters, which can kind of drag down a narrative uh, for a streaming show. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll for travel because you're going so far. We're gonna roll survival check for each of the days. I think it's gonna take three days since there's three of you. And if at the end of those three days we've had two out of three are bad checks, you'll have a point of exhaustion to 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 ref reflect the fact that you've had an arduous journey. If you get Two out of three successes, then you will not be exhausted. Okay. If you have three failures, we might have two points of exhaustion. We'll see how it goes. Oh boy. Um, yeah. So Callie, make me a travel check. Okay, I did. I got an eleven. So I am going to say that's what I got. And then if you all want to use rerolls, you can decide that now that we know I got an eleven on the first day. Okay. I nice. am going to we'll see how mine is a failure. Um, Lysandros, do you want to make your survival check? Sure, why not? I've got a solid minus one on survival. I'm just going to roll a physical die. I uh, know. <laughs> Let's see, the rerolls are good for you. Mm, that's a great eight. I'm going to use a reroll yeah. on that. Yeah, one. use that reroll. We have five left for table. Mm, that is a 13. Not a ton that better, is, but significantly better. That is a success. All right, we're finding the line. Yeah. Uh, so, Mara Fine, go ahead and make a survival check for me. So roll d20 and add your survival to it. All right, Mara Fine, bring us home. Survival's at the very bottom. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I hit it once this time. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is a, it's, it's a, it's a dirty 20, but oh, that yeah. is a success. So y'all made it to your destination. Um, three days of travel. You are not exhausted. So congratulations. You are there. I imagine, like, Mara Fine, do you play music as a bard? Yes. I believe okay. so, yes. <laughs> what kind of instrument do you play? I, ha I think it's like a flute, I think it was, I picked. Oh, yeah. Oh. Lysandros plays the lyre. <laughs> we totally so had a jam session. <laughs> yeah, we just had like Seder jams going the entire time. <laughs> yeah, that's probably that's probably, probably why Callie was so exhausted the first day because like she was trying to like focus on the journey and she had Seder jams happening. She's like, "Oh my god, I want to go to bed now. Let me go to bed." <laughs> but by the end of it, she was like jamming right along with them. She was just like making it up, like with that. She like found like a, a twig to play like on things as she was going. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you make it to Skofos. It is a sprawling city. It is definitely not the bright, lush greenery that you're used to from Neolantin or Melitus. It is rocks, it is mountain, and uh, there is a literal maze to enter the city. Uh, there's these twisting streets that are carved from red sandstone of the Badlands. Uh, there are these walls that rise as like buildings and like, so essentially like buildings and homes have been carved out of these mazes. And uh, there is a big fortress palace that like stands over it. And you know that this is like the realm of people who like hardcore worship Mogus. And you have arrived and you stick out like a sore thumb. This is not a multicultural city. This is not these ports of call. This is the realm of the Minotaur. And so as you wander through the city, the, th the four of you stick out like a sore, sore thumb. And you kind of hear some of them mutter to themselves about meat and things like that. Uh, but they're mostly messing with you. Like this is the more civilized of the Minotaur area. So you're not really being threatened, but you are definitely being hazed at the very least. 
And then uh, finally, like a town guard kind of approaches you and kind of like looks you up and down um, and just kind of says like, what can I, what can I do for you? We're, uh, we're looking for whoever's in charge, like in a, a really like top tier sense, you know, like, like who's the boss of your boss and the boss of that boss, right? I'm my own boss. Wow. That sounds fun. You know what? I really respect you for that. But like, <laughs> then why are you guarding the town? Because it's my town. I want my town to be guarded. And you just like decided that you were going to go stand outside and guard your town? He looks at you and you can tell he's not used to thinking this hard. <laughs> oh. Is this some sort of magic you're doing? I don't I don't take kindly to magic. No, no, I, I would I would never dream of doing magic. I I don't even have a very clear idea of what magic is. I mean, it, uh, all I'm saying is that uh, if it is by your own uh, need to do public service, that uh, you, hmm, uh, uh, I don't know. You're a scary guy. Make, um, a make a deception check for that comment about I don't know anything about magic because to him that's like that seems like something a magic user would say. <laughs> I got a twenty-one. Okay. He's like, all right, I don't understand magic. So if you're saying you don't do magic, I'm gonna believe you. And Callie was gonna say something. Oh, Callie was just gonna kind of like, like, does it look like a talent's guard? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming Callie has probably interacted with Minotaurs over time of bounty hunting. So she's just going to kind of slide in and like puff out her chest and arms and like put her sword over her shoulder. <laughs> to be like, we're just in town looking for uh, whoever runs the, whoever, uh, what's the word? Who's a, uh, Who's the ringleader, if you know what I'm saying? That would be uh, that would be the, the priests, I think, in Mogus's temple. Maybe uh, you know some of the stronger ones. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. And then she just walks on by, brushes his shoulder, maybe a little. All right. Uh, uh, see you later. I, I, I'm with her, so we're, we're gonna keep going. And if I see anybody who's doing magic or anything like that, I will tell them not to mess with you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you make your way. I, I, I just, so basically, you don't see a lot of temples to a lot of different guards. You do see temples to a lot of temples to Mogus. There's a lot of like smaller temples um, that pop up. There are a couple to Erebos. There are a, a couple to Kiranos and a couple to Perforos. But Mogus is definitely the like big god in charge of this town. Um, one thing is that uh, the Minotaurs actually have a little minor pantheon of gods they worship. So you see a lot of the little things to them as well. Um, there are always like lesser deities. Um, so that, that you're kind of, kind of seeing some of that there. Um, and yeah, you, uh, you find your way to this temple of Mogus and, uh, standing in the temple, there are actually a, there's a lot of smithing happening. This is a, a culture that is really dedicated to strength and weaponry and things like that. And so when you head up to the temple, you actually meet this gigantic minotaur who is out front and he is working on just like this massive, massive sword that he's that he's working on. So before we get there, as we've kind of mm -hmm. been walking through this whole area, Lysandros has felt like the the even if it's not completely aggressive, the not particularly friendly stares on them. And he turns to the group and goes, ah, tell you what, I'm going to slip into something a little more comfortable, if you don't mind. Just give me a moment. 
and he sort of ducks off into like a shadow of an alleyway. And as you see him kind of duck in, he sort of steps into the shadows for a moment. And then without actually changing, just like the way the light falls on him, uh, when he steps back out, he's a minotaur, like a full grown male minotaur. But if you look closely, uh, his shadow still has the rounded horns of the satyr. And he comes Love out it. and he, and he's just like, yeah, I think I think they might uh, treat me a little uh, more low key if I look like this. <clears throat> How's this voice sound? Am I a minotaur now? <laughs> oh yeah, this is that'll get you far. Mm. You're great. Let's, let's fight. Let's fight something. My horns are pointy and not rounded. Uh, okay, okay, just just keep it cool and. Uh, Minotaurs don't usually have much to say. I mean, they do, but like, they're like me. They like to fight, right? Like, you, you solve things with your fists, right? Like, that's the, the way Are life. you talking to Lysandros? Kind of the group at this point, probably. She yeah. probably started talking to Lysandros and then turned to, like, uh, Morifine and, okay. um, yeah, the rest of the group. And, was, yeah, you just, just act tough. Uh, like if they stare, you, if you start staring them down, like just don't blink and you're good. Good. Got it. Don't fine. blink. Don't say anything. Act tough. I can do that. Yeah. We'll be fine. And if they want to fight you, I mean, I fought a couple. They're not that bad. I mean, you just got to show them you, you just have to show them that you can stand your ground and. They'll... Sounds good to me. They'll, uh, they'll come around. Give me just one second. I'll be right back. Just a moment. <laughs> um, so as I said, as you made your way up to the temple, there is, like, you're not quite to temple yet, but there's a smith out front. Um, you kind of get the idea that where he's placed, it means that he's kind of been given a position of prominence in the town. It feels like maybe the people, that, I, I love you so much. Um, it actually, it's funny you did that because I was going to say something. Uh, when you when you get to him, you get the, the people who are in positions of prominence. It's almost like there's a tiered system. And the more honored you are, the closer you get to operate towards the Temple of Mogus. Uh, and you also notice that a lot of the minotaurs that you pass have this decorative metal tip on a lot of their horns and it just feels like it's something that they're doing out of some sort of like sign of respect and reverence um and yeah so you're as you're walking by um yeah there he's he's out front he's probably the closest you can get to the temple without like starting to head in there's guards around the temple at this point that would probably be a little more preventative so he looks up and he's just like you uh you need sword or something Lysandros just looks at him and kind of goes. Uh, look how he's gonna look at the group. Like, am I doing this? Uh, okay. Mm, uh, is there something I can do? Do you know these? Do you know these? This satyr and this person and this cat. Mm, yep. You don't get a whole lot of uh, this kind in Scofos. Nope. Okay. We uh, we uh, we're here to get a uh, we're here to f find someone. Uh, uh, she kind of turns to uh, the group and it's just like. Okay, what are we actually looking for again? Are we looking for the sword or are we looking for the person? I forgot. I think we're, we're, we're looking for, for the, the, the king of might, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it was the king, but we just asked for the king? Will they find that suspicious? Maybe? I mean, is, is that something I should ask for? I've been, I've been trying the, like, few words silent yeah. thing, but yeah, it seems yeah. like it's freaking them out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you're doing it really well, but I think we're I think you're good. Um, you, you I didn't realize you were gonna turn into a, a minotaur, and I think that kind of like you're good with just that. Oh, oh, all right, okay. <clears throat> so I turn and go. 
Hey, I'm sorry I was so quiet earlier. I was, uh, had something in my throat. Yep. All right. We're, uh, yeah. I know how that goes. We're, uh, we're here to find, uh, and he kind of looks around at the group, to find the, the mightiest of the mighty. That's yeah, us well, looking, looking for the mighty. Well, you ask about that around here, you're probably going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of people telling you it's them, but, uh. I know. Well, better. then, sure sounds like I'm close to. <clears throat> sure sounds like I'm close to the right place. Yeah. Um, I'm willing. To, I have enough uh, pride in my abilities to know that there's uh, people who are tougher than me. Uh, that's why I'm where I am now because I respect my authorities. That's why they let old Salgar work the mill, right? Work the smithy right in front of the, right in front of the temple. And Salgar was contributed as to uh, saving throw by Artemis. So thank you for the NPC. Hey. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Artemis. I don't know. I don't thank think Salgar you. was a uh, Minotaur in their version, but Eros, uh, <laughs> welcome. You get you become a Minotaur. Congratulations. Um. So, uh, what was the name? Sal. Salgar. Salgar. Uh, Salgar. How long have you been a weapon? The weaponsmith. Uh, in front of the temple. I've been, uh, I've been here about a few seasons now. That's big skirmish. I helped build a lot of the weapons for it. So, you know. Well, you, you say that you are, uh, you appreciate authority. So, uh, who is it if you had to, I don't know, you know, point us in a direction that you would say is in a position of authority? Over um, us, Minotaur. Is that some sort of, some sort of joke? Uh, nope. Just uh, not from around here and trying to pay my proper respects to whoever is, oh, I don't know, a, a ruler or a chieftain or, or uh, some sort of kahuna. Someone that's very... Mighty, maybe a king of might, you might say. You might say that. You might say, you might say that. <clears throat> right, everyone? She like looks at everyone behind her. Sounds well, mighty. We, you know, the folks here inside the lesser peristyle tend to be the ones who call the shots. So you got, you know, Haroxy and Malachia. They tend to be the the big ones. All right. Sounds well. like. Sounds the like that's where we need to help go. Us fit in with the rest of the world, but also be tough, you know. Well, maybe it's a good time for us to go and uh, pay our respects to Mogus, our our favorite god, right? Team. Right. Yeah. You also notice as you're heading towards this temple that it's it's not as much a temple to Mogus by itself, but also a temple to Ephara. Mm -hmm. And it seems like this is where the combination of the might of Mogus and the ordered city powers of Ephara kind of combine together into this like idea of a vision of like a future for a minute. This is kind of where the Minotaurs have created a society as opposed to the ruffian bands that roam the wilds. Hmm. So are you heading up to the temple or are you? Yeah. Okay. Um, there are some guards that are there and they seem to, they're not preventing you from entering. They're just kind of eyeballing you and trying to figure out what you're doing there. And one of them kind of stops and is like, hey, uh, not going to try anything funny, right? And he looks specifically at Callie because you're carrying a sword over your shoulder and at uh, Zindar, who just seems to have a suspicion. And also a little bit of Marfine, because satyrs aren't really trusted that much around this area. So it's kind of a... I will say, Marfine, you're not really getting the energy off of these minotaurs that you were getting off the ones you dealt with. These seem a little more civilized. The ones that you dealt with were more like barbarian-esque. And mm -hmm. this is a little bit more organized, a little bit more 
like a hierarchy and things like that. So those ones felt more like thugs, and these feel more like soldiers. Okay. Hey, uh, they're uh, they're not going to try anything funny. They're traveling with me, and I only uh, I only travel with with tough people who you know respect a good fight and. Uh, we just got to pay our respects to Mogus as we're passing through. All right. Head on in, but just uh, be be on your guard, because we'll be watching you. But I'm always on my guard. I, there's nothing I love more than a good fight. And if you're not ready when a good fight comes to you, then why, you're the one who's going to lose that fight. That's what my pop always said. She'll sheathe her sword. Mm -hmm. All right. Happy horns in to you. And he just starts going. <laughs> Callie just gives him like a lower like thumbs up. You're doing great. Just... <laughs> All right. Let me see. I can get a quick image real quick here. Is there anyone around us while we're walking in? Um, there are people who are there worshiping and, and I think we just lost joy. Um, okay. Um, there are people who are worshiping. There's nothing who feels like necessarily, oh, I'm get water. Okay. Um, there's nothing, nobody feels like they are per se like a threat. There's not like anything like sinister happening. It's just people that are there worshiping. Okay. Which in the Minotaur like temple might be a lot of sparring and a lot of like a lot of horns banging into each other and stuff like that. And you definitely, yeah, that's that's kind of what you're getting the vibe of. It's not it's not like a chill like like solemn area, but it's uh, but the sparring does feel a little more organized here. It does feel like it's respecting some level of rule and decorum hmm. as opposed to just being like a brawl you would find in a bar or on the open battlefield. Right. <clears throat> See, I can appreciate this. This is this is fighting. This is what this is similar to what we back, did back home at the Pride. This is fighting. Not oh. not that what the Gorgon was selling at the at the what was that Colosseum? Ugh. As you say that, uh, one of the priests who is a little bit more decorated in some robes and some like not quite finery, but like maybe like some decorative skulls that are holding a toga over. Um, she turns to look at you and she goes, huh, I know a thing or two about the glory of the Gorgon. Sounds like we've had similar experiences. Ugh, tell me about it. What, what did she, what did she try? Did she try to trick you into uh, fighting in her ring? She looks at you like you should kind of insulted that you would imply this of her. Um, and <laughs> she she looks and she says, no, I don't think the Gorgon was too interested in having the leader of Skophos fight in her arena. And then you look and she is surrounded by a, like a different, oh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, the blacksmith, the thing that's, like the, the forge. She has like a forge of her own and you see that there are these very intricate weapons and like you can tell that she is a, she is an artisan smithy through and through and she, um, she says I, but she has, he, she has tended to try to poach some of our better warriors to mm. fight in her facetious and fake games and they have no glory from them. I, I'd spit might... that this place is respectable. Wait, yes, uh, uh, you said you're you're the leader of Skophos? Oh, I am, along with my oracle friend Olakia over here. And you see another another oracle, another like dressed up a little bit more in less like military looking with the skulls and a little bit more decorative. And you see this Minotaur who is also female and she has two different color eyes. Oh. That's like the distinct detail of her. Um, Very nice. 
Well, I lost everybody for just a moment. Am I still on yep. for you guys? Yeah, you here, are here. still on. Do you hear us? Yay. Yes, I do. Everything seems fine. It all just went bloop, and then it mm -hmm. came back. That yeah. happened to me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> One of her eyes is red, and the other eye, I believe, is blue. Let me just double check and make sure that's correct. Yes. And they both have white around them. So it's white and red, white and blue. So Lysandros kind of turns to the group and is like, hey, look, if, if she's the one in charge, maybe she's who we're looking for or, or one of the people she associates with, right? I mean... I mean, it, she's, she's working on some weapons. They look kind of fancy. I mean, it doesn't seem like she's literally a king, but we were pretty explicitly told that it wasn't literally a king thing, so I, I, it could work, right? I mean, those weapons look kind of new, but <laughs> there's no way to tell. I mean, how can we find out? Without blatantly asking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would it hurt to ask? I mean, would they even know? I don't know. It's, it's worth a shot. I mean, what I'm getting so far from dealing with Minotaurs is that they tend to respect a certain level of directness. It doesn't come naturally to me, but I don't know. that That's kind of how it's always worked with you, Callie. Yeah, I mean, what you guys, what you see. I mean, it's kind of what we've always worked with on the Pride, so. But right. more, more I of my, Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to ask. Did you say that they, some of their 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 clan jumped you yeah i have a history with them but for some reason i'm not getting that vibe with the, these ones they seem very well behaved compared to the ones that i'm used to the other ones are more enraged and wanted to fight these ones seem very structured and by the by the book oh okay just wanted to make sure, because <laughs> if I need if I need to uh, get some uh, answers, I can do. We can do that too. But just let us sure know. can. Yeah, I don't want to call this a dead end yet, just in case it leads us to something else. But I don't think these are the ones we're looking for. Maybe they have something for us. I mean, oh. we're here. We might as well. Ask around, see if anybody at least knows who it is we're looking for. All right. So, mm -hmm. I guess we'll turn back to her and go, <clears throat> Well, we're just going to be frank with you. We're, uh, we're here to uh, find the people who are in charge. In fact, we heard rumors of a, of a mighty Minotaur King. Or maybe not... Literally a mighty Minotaur king, but someone who's in a pretty high position of authority, who well, rumors have been calling it the King of Might. When you say King of Might, Alaki of the Torn, with the two eyes, snaps and looks at you, and then a smirk comes across her face, and she looks at Haraxi, who looks at her and nods, and then says, hmm, I didn't think you would. I don't know what voice I was doing for her now. I, I didn't think you would openly ask so quickly. So you seem to have the look of a trickster. Upon Me? You. I've never tricked anyone in my life. <clears throat> you're standing trick. in my temple wearing a fake form. So don't tell me you're not a trickster. Lysandros just... Yeah. All right, fine. You saw through me, but the question still stands. Uh, we are, you know, from out of town, and we were trying to find this this king of might, as it seems like you all call him, or someone calls him. Her. Her. Now I'm doing, now I'm doing Kia's voice again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there are... Rumors of risen archons. We're not big fans of archons up here. They tended to be 
bad to us in the past. So, are you here to battle the Archons or not? Let's cut to the chase. Well, they aren't just rumors. Definitely ran into some and uh, had a really hard time killing them. So, yes, we're here to help deal with them. But we can't with the weapons we have. So, we've come looking for the King of Might to help us acquire weapons that will. She kind of like leans back, gives you all a look over you. This is what you found, the King of Might. It is the two of us. That's great. That, that, uh, that's fantastic. Well, then, then can you help us? Do, do you have like ancient Weapons that that uh, are are older than gods, because we were told that those are going to be like pretty necessary. We could, but you have to prove yourselves to oh, us. God. And then the other or the oracle, Alaki of the Torn, says, "Might comes in two forms: the might of the body and the might of the mind." And we can think of only but one way to test both. Can you guess what it is? Callie gets impatient. <laughs> and she's just like, let's go. I'm ready to spar. I'm here. Let's do this. <laughs> My dear Leonin, we are Minotaur. It's going to be a labyrinth. And they clap their hands and both in together uh, and some flames shoot up and they go, we will place you in our toughest labyrinth. And if you are able to conquer it, you will earn the weapon you seek. And if you are not able to conquer it, you will continue until you are able to. Hmm. Well, uh, that certainly sounds fun. So uh, our options are to go into the labyrinth and then either uh, conquer the labyrinth or eventually die in the labyrinth trying to conquer it they don't say anything <clears throat> hey sounds like a party to me i guess and just to be clear these weapons weapon whatever it may be that came before the Gods could possibly kill a god. Sure. You've heard of attempts to do such a thing, I'm sure, in the history of the world. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Just, just checking. I will say the gods are not tend to be very fond of people who try to use weapons to kill them. I'm they sure tend they wouldn't to find ways to take out their vengeance on those who do. This is what I was saying. He turns to the group and is kind of like, <clears throat> but they might reward those who defeat archons, but they are not able to defeat themselves. Absolutely, and that's what we're here for. And she puts on her biggest, toothiest smile. I want you to make a deception check for me. Because <laughs> I don't think Callie's great at this. <laughs> oh, I have zero for deception. <laughs> I got a four. Yeah, she goes, I'm sure that is all you're here to do. And she goes, Leonin. 
<laughs> they're not exactly known as a people for being big fans of the gods in general. So you already, I almost gave you disadvantage in that role because you're a Leonin, but I guess I didn't need to. Yeah, it was oh, unnecessary. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? Do you brave the labyrinth or do you leave and show that you are the cowards that most of my city think you are? Well, I don't think they're cowards, Haroxy says. They made it this far. I don't know how to do these voices. I keep, I keep, I'm all over the map. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're in whatever you want to do. Yeah. Just voice it up, you know? Yeah. Well, we're a group, so. Yeah. If, I mean, I mean, it's the only way. Zindar's like, yeah, I guess that um, the labyrinth is okay. If that's what you want to do, the labyrinth, what's the labyrinth? Hey, I mean, I've been a coward uh, before a lot of times and, you know, it worked out pretty well for me. But, hey, I remember even wanting to turn down new experiences. So maybe uh, doing a heroic travel through a minute, through a, uh, a I want to say through a minotaur, but that's not what I mean. It's through <laughs> a labyrinth. There it is. That's the word. Maybe that's <laughs> what uh, what's on the docket next. You know, maybe it'll be a great time, and I'll come out of it being like, you know, what my favorite new hobby is labyrinth navigation. And I'll be like, why didn't I la navigate any labyrinths before now? <laughs> right? It could work out. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. She's. She's just like, all right, yep. Send us to your worst labyrinth or second worst. Yeah, no, one of the medium labyrinths. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like a novice level labyrinth? Do you have like a, like. Look, it doesn't have to be like a straight line, but let's go to like a beginner labyrinth. <laughs> so we can like pick up the ropes and, you know, figure out like the first little labyrinth tricks. She like looks at you for like a long time and just tries to decide if like she's offended by you or if she's amused by you. And she's kind of landed somewhere in the middle of those two things, but she's okay with it. L um, Lysandros knows this look extremely well. <laughs> all right. Um, so then uh, let me just grab all your characters. See how well this works. I'm going to open up a roll 20 map. So they open this kind of doorway. It kind of, they kind of like pull on like a series of old like levers and pulleys and the ground that you're on, they're kind of still staying elevated where they are, but the ground that you are on starts to lower down to the ground, like, like below almost like an elevator, but it's kind of like, there's like a mechanism pulling it down and then it stops and then the ceiling where they were seals up again over you and leaves you sealed off in this room that looks like a temple. And let me see if I can get you all there now. All right, I'm gonna switch out of this helmet real quick because it's hot as- Yeah, I bet. I like was- <laughs> Hot as Nyx or, I don't know if Nyx is all that hot, but it's I think hot. Nick is actually pretty comfortable, but you know. <laughs> And you find yourselves in this small basin area. There's there's steps that you can tell could possibly lead back up to that opening where you came from. And there are a couple of torches. And I am I have not moved you over to that map. Hang on. Um, so this area is pretty. This time I, I did just load up a page on roll twenty that you'll see, and it is. Kind of in the middle is where I have you all at. So if you want to like scroll through, you'll find a spot in the middle. There's a very small little space that you are in. There's a pool of water in front of you and it's dimly lit. There were torches and you can see that to the left and to the right, there are walkways that you can go. And you hear a loud drum beat from above as if to denote the fact that you have begun this labyrinth. Oh, 
as we're like getting uh care like i guess lowered down callie will like shout up i'm still down for that sparring match <laughs> and then i will remember you said that <laughs> You hear it shout from below. I will remember <laughs> you said that. Okay, what do you do? <clears throat> All right, labyrinth time. Well, the way I see it, how difficult could it be? I mean, each room we go into is going to have a certain number of ways out or ways that we can go. And I mean, you all know my approach to figuring out the way through things. We just keep rolling dice and going whichever direction they tell us to go until we find the way out or die okay well what are the odds of us surviving that if we do go that route well let me put it this way i've done this before and so far i've never died but weren't you also like blessed by god that's what i thought <laughs> we're gonna this die. just makes it a little <laughs> yeah. more fun you know we're dead. <laughs> Look, think of it this way. In the past, I was doing these things while I was the uh, horse in the race that was favored to win. But now I'm the horse in the race that's favored to lose. And what that means is that the odds are better. So that if we win, we get even more winnings out of it. That is just simple gambler's math. So if we say we have I'd call it 30 to one odds of actually making it through this thing. If we do get out for every one whatever the hell we put in, we get 30 out, which I assume will be, I don't know, valor and will be rewarded with heroism or something. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't really know how to calculate the expected value of, you know, doing selfless acts for heroic purposes, but I'm sure it's gonna work out that way somehow. All right. I guess. Where, how do we find ourselves on the map again? You're kind of in the middle. Oh, I found it. Yeah, so there's a pathway to your left and a pathway to your right. So, hey, I mean, if no one else has it, if, if no one has a strong preference, the easy way to do it, and he takes out his coin again. I mean, it's worked for me so far. Heads Callie's left. gonna look around the area <laughs> to see if there's anything. Oh, okay, I get it. You want to be unsportsmanlike about it? <laughs> fine. Okay, fine. Um, make a perception check for me. What is with my rolls tonight? Oh my gosh, uh, Callie. Um, Callie's gonna get. Kelly feels like this is probably a safe bet to just like go either way, at least for now. So she's like, fine. If anyone has no better ideas, I say we go with a coin flip to start things off. It, it led us here, did it not? Yes. My satyrs does a jump that's surprisingly high because satyrs are quite good at jumping and rogue satyrs are even better. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I say heads left, tails right. Okay, so we'll say that evens are our heads and odds are tails. Sure, we will. And that is a six. So, so that one, which way that did one, we just no say that was? You said evens are heads, so you're gonna go. <laughs> you're gonna go. You said. I think I said <laughs> heads right and tails left. I think. Okay. Okay. So we have we have heads. So heads were right. So we'll go right. Okay. So yeah, you head right. And so a little bit of the map is reveal. Oh, went the wrong way. Uh, reveal areas. A little bit of the way is revealed. So you're able to go. I'm not going to make you move your figures throughout this maze because um, I, I do have things that are going to happen. But so, yeah, you're able to go forward. And uh, let's just to make things simpler. Uh, when you get to this first little uh, intersection here, uh, do you go left or do you go right? Someone else want to make the call this time? Uh, let's go left. <laughs> I like that okay. decisiveness. <laughs> okay, you go left, right. and let me just double check here. You wander for about an hour going left, 
and there is no exit this way. And as you get to the last room going to the left, I will go ahead and reveal this area as you go. Um, where was that at? Um, yeah, you basically circle yourself back around um, to where you started. And when you get to this section here, either side of this, where you this kind of little spot would be, um, I need you all to make a perception check. All righty. Let's do some perceiving. Come on, rolls. I got a solid seven. I'm going to take a reroll on that one, though. We still have rerolls left, right? Yes, we yeah, do. We have to. Um, yes. We have five. Nine. The table. <laughs> you got right. a nine? Yeah. <laughs> My reroll perception is a much more respectable 17. There we go. Okay. I got a seven as well, which turns into a 10, I think. Okay. Uh, Lysandros, you suddenly feel the rumbling of the ground and sorry what did you get again? what'd you get Callie 10 10 okay so only Lysandros notices this uh Lysandros you feel the rumbling of the ground and you hear the scraping of claws against the like the walls and you hear something like smashing through the walls and suddenly uh you are face to face with a hydra <gasps> everyone roll initiative oh no Bum, 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 ba da 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 Okay. You know what? I'm just going to say that the character roll rolls are, are hacked. <laughs> <laughs> I have not rolled above a 10 on the day. You've had, you've had a rough run of rolls. Um, let me go ahead. How do I roll initiative for this Hydra? My dice are cursed. I'm going to re-roll. I'm going to use a re-roll here. Ashan, here's the way I see it. Over the course of a die's life, it will only roll each number a certain number of times. Like, because it's going to roll a finite number of times. So each time you roll a low number, that's taking one out of the low numbers that die will ever roll. So you probably just have good numbers left after that. I rolled a two. See, you're really like banking some good <laughs> luck right here. Okay, I luckily for you, the Hydra also rolled a two. So great. All right. Uh, so we got a two for the Hydra. Let me just add everybody. I thought I, I thought it would add you in automatically. I think there's like a way to make it do that, but I always forget. Um, oh yeah, I did. Oh, roll I just realized that I brought in Kia and not. Callie, because I don't think I had <laughs> Callie on the map last time because she wasn't here. <laughs> She's way bigger than everybody else. Um, boom. All right. Um, all right. Just for the sake of combat, I'm going to use, because the, the, the map is, the maze is kind of just a map that I wanted to have for a visual of a maze, but it's not the best visual. It's not the best space for uh, combat, because it's like, cool, we're fighting in three dimensions, at least this, at this point. It might be fun at another point to do maze-based maze, maze -based combat where you can't move through lines and stuff like that, but, heck yeah, let's do it. Why not? Um, so we'll put you all here. We'll say you were down this maze. I think it might be really fun to see how you handle yourselves. Well, go ahead and put yourselves in what order you would be, but this is where you're at over here. And then I will put the Hydra in while you're doing that. Um, a thing I can do with that. I'm actually having trouble using the app right now because I have to use it. Oh, okay. Um, no worries. It's not that big of a deal. I don't want to like drag the game down by having you try to move things around. So I can just kind of like, if you want to just tell me where you're at, I can move you. I know. That okay, I great. That works. Hydra. I know that I have a Hydra token. Where is it? Hail Hydra. Hail. <laughs> Hydra. Yeah. There you all. I was wondering when someone say it. <laughs> where is my Hydra? Ah, here it is. Yeah, that, that, that's that's where we run into a little bit of a problem. With I'm going to scale this down just for the room, um, because <laughs> the Hydra is very big compared to the maze map. Um, 
So where are you all at? Cool. And then we have, this is hilarious, the Hydra. <laughs> so um, I think the Hydra is, I'm going to say for its benefit, uh, it yeah. is limited in its movement. So like it doesn't like, it doesn't have the ability to go past a certain point. Um, it'll take extra turns to do that because it'll have to like, it'll have to like squeeze its way around the hall. So. That is hilarious seeing it on the map. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just so it's not ridiculous. But yeah, it's, it's a little baby hydra, a little little hydra baby. So it's a labyrinth-sized hydra. <clears throat> so um, uh, since, uh, oh, I guess we're in initiative order now, right? Yeah. What was? Sorry, I accidentally closed the turn order thing. So I know Callie, you. We're at two. I'll put you all in. Okay. Uh, Mar uh, Callie, you had a two. Lysanne, what was your initiative? Ten. Ten? Okay. All right. And then Mara, fine. What was your initiative? Oh, you're muted. Oh. Fifteen. <laughs> there you go. Nice. You're actually our best one. All right. And then I will put Zindar in as well. Let me roll for Zindar. Okay. Okay, let me grab his character sheet for Zindar. Loving this. All right, Zin. I'm loving it. All right. Well, this is all happening. Sorry, Callie. Oh, I was just gonna say, while well, this is all happening, Callie's just like kind of trailing behind, being like, I've never been in a labyrinth before. I don't get this. Like, what? We're just supposed to like find our way out? Like, what's so scary about this? Yeah, and that's when the Hydra attacks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so everyone has an initiative and we shall begin. So, uh, Mara, fine. You get to go first. This massive, multi-headed lizard creature appears in front of you. Uh... Mm. I am going to... Do, do we know? We don't know if he's magic, huh? It's probably pretty magical. It's it's a hydra. It's like a big oh. mythical lizard creature. Okay, well the first thing I'm gonna try and do is dispel magic. Okay. Um <laughs> I'm gonna say you know enough to know that won't work. Because dispel magic is more when you're dispelling like a spell that has been cast. Okay. So like if somebody had like charmed your friend or somebody had like fairy fire or something like that effect, you could, or like if there's an effect that was going, you could dispel it, but this is a creature. So you can't, unless you have a banishment spell, you wouldn't be able to remove this creature. What about paralyze it? You can try paralyze. You can try a paralysis. Okay. Well, I, apparently the cast is called hold person. <laughs> yeah, you can, you need, you can, uh, um, do you have hold monster? Because I think yeah. you might need that for. Yeah, it's okay, a that's very specific. A okay. Yeah, that's fine. That that's a, a a good information. Thank you for catching that, Jordan. Yeah. So hey, hold Jordan? person. Is <laughs> fine yeah. I'm helping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold person is for a humanoid, and this counts as a monstrosity. So. All right. Well. Man, I'm not very attacky. <laughs> you can. Oh wait. Actually, you know what? Just for um, sake of health wise, I want to heal um, I want to heal Callie because she doesn't have her full 69 health. Oh, she should. Everyone oh, should no, be I reset. Sorry. I realized oh, just now okay. that I didn't take my long rest. We're good. Okay. Yeah, everyone it. should be at full health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you have attacks. You have, you have some pretty good stuff. As I a, know, but I'm yeah. scared to touch it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I usually like to watch what like the monster does first and then pass. <laughs> you can delay. Okay. Yeah, I'm you can delay the action. There's also gonna... you can dodge, you can yeah. Yeah. You can get inspiration. I'm definitely going to Oh yeah, I'll do Bard of Inspiration then. Okay. 
Where is that, though? And I will say that... Oh, found it. I will reveal... I'm going to say that, you're all. if you want to, you're able to come around behind it and get it from... If you want to end up flanking it, you can. So... Okay. So if you if you do Bardic Inspiration, you basically are giving Bardic Inspiration to one of your co-players. Uh -huh. And so you have those uses of it. And then I think at level seven, I think it's a D8 at this point, isn't it? Um, let me double check. I just have the D2 or the, the, the button to click it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, let me get your, it should tell you. Hang on. So you go to class features. Bardic Inspiration. Yeah, so um, any creature that can hear you gains an Inspiration die 1d8. For 10 minutes, the creature can add it to one Ability Check, Attack Roll, or Saving Throw. So you can give that to Callie or Lysandros, and they can add a d8 to their one of their rolls for the next 10 minutes. Okay, well, I'm going to give it to Callie because her rolls have been really bad. <laughs> it's like a nice thing you're doing, but like really catty in a way. It's really fun. <laughs> very, it's very marifying. Um, all right. <laughs> Thank you. I feel inspired. <laughs> Do I have to hit the roll button and roll? No, just you just you just mark off that you used it, and now okay. Callie has that, and she can add that D eight. So that's your bonus action. So you can hold your okay. action for now, and then if you want to use it before the end of this round, you can use it to attack. Or okay. I will. Well, declare what are you holding? You can't just like free hold. You have to like say what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. So like I will attack if this happens, or I will dodge if this happens. Or... I will dodge if he hits me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll say instead of holding your action, we'll say you're using your dodge action. Okay. And what a dodge action means that if it attacks you, it will have disadvantage on the attack. So that's okay. like yeah, it's a cool D and D. A lot of people don't remember you can do a dodge as a D and D action, but that is uh, very much a thing you can do. And. I think for a rogue, it might be very useful and helpful quite a bit. So <laughs> okay. um, you're a bard, but close enough. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So you're going to dodge, and you're also giving bardic inspiration as your bonus action. Great. Lysandros, it is your turn. And you okay. are right in front of this thing, because you're the one who found it. I am right in front of this thing. Uh, so Lysandros is uh, going to kind of look at every... or As it's coming at him, he's going to go, Ah, I know I talked about courage earlier, but uh, I think maybe we should run a bit. Uh, and he starts to like kind of duck out of the way and start moving away from the thing. Okay. And he's gonna uh, say, okay. Well, he, he's gonna take out his sling and try and like whack at one of his heads as he's doing this, but he wants to just like say this as he's like trying to duck away from it. He says, <laughs> I, I think I have an idea. If we all like retreat just a little bit, I might be able to give us something of a, a bit of an advantage here. Uh, okay, are, you gonna, are you going to attack your sling as you run? Yeah. Okay, I'll say you're able to get off a shot with a sling as you go around the corner. And I'll say because of the rules that we used for the water elementals, because it says multiple heads, I'll say that you can you can hit it twice with the same with the sling because of the heads. Nice. So. That feels like a fair call to me. All right, so I will make my attack. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Two bird sling. Boom. The first sling comes at him, and it is a 16 on the die, which is a 23 total. 23 hits, for sure. Nice. And I, I don't think that would be sneak attack for any particular reason at this point. No, because nobody, none of your allies is engaged with it, and I don't think you have any special things with your with your subclass, because you're a trickster, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm an arcane trickster, so nothing at the moment. Um, but I will uh, roll my... 1d4 plus 4, and it's as much as it can be. So it's 8 damage. Okay, Ooh. great. It takes 8 damage. And then I'm going to uh, run as far as I can down the hall. So it oh, did you like want to the... do the sling and attack a different head? Oh, yeah, yeah. That It, it just ricochets off, so... Yeah, so then Let's... make another attack for the other head to see the hits. Let's see. Ooh, that is a 4, which is an 11. Okay, that is not hit. All right. So yeah, it, it bounces off one of the head and starts going to one of the others. But you know, it's yeah, hard and to head calculate that. The other head, ricochet. yeah, the other head kind of whips back and swings around, and the, the rock misses it and hits the wall. Um, but it's you like, did hit it with one of them, and it did it did seem not to love that it happened. Yeah. Okay. So Lysandros, as soon as he throws the sling, kind of pushes himself off the wall he was close to and bounds uh, across like to that wall on the other side and pushes himself back down the hall and starts like. Uh, doing the, you know, satyr leap thing to okay. uh, move quickly. 
I'll say because way. it's greater leaping, I won't I won't charge your distance around Cali. I'll tell you, you can go past her without suffering uh, terrain loss. So great. Uh, so it seems like so. Just a clarification of what we're seeing. It seems like the thing has to sort of pull itself through the the like maze, right? <laughs> like it's it's a pretty tight fit for it. Yeah, I'm going to consider the maze to be difficult terrain for it. Okay. So yeah, I just I yell as I go by. It's like if we can put some distance between us and it, I, I can get. I can. I have an idea that could help us out. Uh. So yeah, I'm gonna yeah, and then I'll just move away. Okay. Uh. It is now Callie's turn. Um. I think Callie will then. Um. Yeah, Callie's gonna just like nod, be like, uh, "All right," and uh, she'll. I'll delay probably to see what the plan is. Okay. If you're going to delay, you have to like declare you're like holding your action and like what oh. you will do if you use your, if, if, if something happens, I will do this. Oh, okay. I, um, I will. Yeah. So, uh, if it moves closer, I will run farther away. Okay. All right. Uh, it is its turn and it sure as heck does move closer. So it kind of like moves down this hallway and, uh, uh, Mara Fine, it kind of goes past you, um, and as it does, one of its heads swings out and bites at you, um, and so it's going to make an attack on Mara Fine, and let me do that first. Is she within five feet of me? Um, she's not, because you because it's if you look at uh, you can't quite see. Let me reveal her. She was kind of here, and I'd ask where y'all were, um, but I think she was kind of back away a little bit. Yeah. Um, so she's not. Okay. It's within five feet of you, but you also can run. <laughs> you're going to do that. So if you okay. want to run, you can. Um, but yeah, it attacks at Marifine. It makes a bite attack, which is a 17. Does a 17, 17 hit you, Marifine? A 17 hit me? Yeah. Uh, if I AC? were to find... So on your sheet, it'll say AC. Like armor class on your sheet. Uh, actually, I have it open here. Your armor class is yeah, it's ten. So oh, okay, I see, I see it. You might not be wearing your armor. I think we got to make sure you have armor on. Looks like you don't have armor on. So let's get that taken care of before next time. But okay. Um, but for now, we'll say that Marfine didn't have it on for some reason. Um, so I'm risking it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it hits you, and it's gonna do. 18 damage to you. Even with my dodge? <laughs> oh, you know what? You're right. Okay, let me, let me attack again because you are dodged. So it doesn't have advantage on the attack. That disadvantage. Uh, second attempt to attack you is an 18. So it did, yeah, it did hit you. And it does 18 damage to you. Okay. Oh, no. It's fine. I got heals. Those I have. <laughs> All right. So, Callie, you were able to run from it. So you were down the hall a bit with... Lysandros. Yeah. And uh, Zindar is also running because I don't think he can go too far. But you did run and you all did kind of leave Marifine behind as you I'll, ran. I'll be making noise as I run. Okay. To get its attention. I'll be like, hey, get over here, lizard face. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is able to get a little bit closer to you if you're running. And so it does make an attack because it can make five attacks on its turn because it can make one attack per head. Damn. So it's going to take the other attack. At Callie. And I do have and my, I'll have my shield out during this, so I'll be at 18 AC. Okay. It did 28 to attack you. It did, I rolled, I rolled a 18 plus 10. So it's a, cool. it's a 28. Yeah. So it's going to attack you and it's going to do 15 damage to you. Piercing. Cool. You said 15 okay. damage? Yep. All right. Okay. That is its turn. Uh, Zindar is going to be running along with you. Uh, now we're at the top of the order. It's Marafine's turn again. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. So now that he's a jerk. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, wait. Do I have to manually subtract my health? 
Yeah, if you go to in D&D Beyond, there's like mm-hmm. at the top of the screen where your hit points are. And it was hit, 18? So yeah, it's hit 18 and hit damage, and it'll subtract from the number. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, what I need to do is uh, I'm going to make myself invisible for now because I need to not get hit again for the next turn so I can heal myself. <laughs> okay, so you're going to cast Invisible? Invisibility? Yeah. Okay. Do I roll okay, it? I'm going to mark on you. Or, you. What's that? I mark it. I mark the slot, right? Yeah, mark a spell slot okay. for it. And then oh. I'm going to mark... Uh, I'm going to put this little ninja mask on you to show that you're invisible. Because um, I don't know what else to use for invisibility. <laughs> so you are marked. So you are currently invisible. So if you cast another spell, you'll be re- revealed. If you attack, mm-hmm. I think you'll be revealed. Um, I'm not, that's how invisibility works. So then that's your turn. Okay. Um, and now it's Lysandros. Okay. So we failed to actually put any space between ourselves and the Hydra. <laughs> so I can't really do what I was trying to do. Um, you wanted us to run. I know, but it caught up to us. It didn't uh, go very fast. It went like three feet. Are you like, going to double move? I thought we would be faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what I wanted to do, which I guess I can still like try and do in some way, was if we could put some room between us and it, then like, say, I want to try and create an illusion that like I like do a big thing and hit the ground and a big portion of the ground like crumbles away and makes a big pit between us and the monster mm. so that it would be distracted by trying to not fall into the pit. But if there's no point where I can like n- have space between us, I, I can't do that. Um, would there be a time when I could create or have an opportunity for that? This is one of the times where D and D initiative order can be a little frustrating to deal with. Um, I think for the sake of storytelling and gameplay, I think I'll let you roll. Go ahead and roll for me. Well, we, we, I, I always say with the way that we run this game that we can drop out of initiative order to do it's like a cinematic scene. So we'll say that we do that. So Marifine goes invisible. You're able to get a little bit of space between all of you. And I will let you roll a... Well, it's it's not a roll. It's just an illusion. Okay. How does the illusion work? Is it a spell? Yeah. It's... Oh God. D&D Beyond is like not working. Is it minor right. illusion? No. It's silent image. Mm. Okay. So I would just have it be like a pit kind of falls, uh, or like opens up in the ground there. And so it creates the image of... Uh, a in this case, a visible phenomenon that is no more than a 15 foot cube. So I would just have it like kind of like fill the way that was there. Okay. Right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I can like happen. have it move as stuff goes on like that. And, okay. But unless they like physically interact with it or use an action to examine it, they can't tell it's an illusion necessarily. Cause it says okay. physical interaction with the image reveals it to be illusion. Um, but a creature that uses its action to examine the image can determine that it's an illusion with successful intelligence investigation check. Um, but otherwise, I mean, if the thing doesn't try jumping into the pit, it should not be able to tell that it's not a real pit. Okay. Yeah. I'll say you do it. Okay, so you burn that spell slot and you have that illusion yeah. active. So Lysandros jumps back and uh, rubs the the like lamb fleece in his gloves that he always has there as his like mechanical opponents. And then like does some like magical mumbo jumbo uh, to pretend like he's doing a big spell and like pushes the ground, like does on the ground. He doesn't even know if the Hydra is going to have any idea that like there are spell casters and things, but Mm -hmm. he, he finds that it tends to help if things feel that there's a reason that stuff have like appeared. So he acts like he did some sort of magical thing and goes, and then the ground just like opens up into a pit in front of the Hydra. Okay. And he's just, uh, should buy some time. Okay. Uh, the Hydra is not super perceptive. So let me see if it can figure out that this feels like it's something that, like if it's, if it's like questioning it or not. Let yeah, me it does that. have to take an action to do that. Yeah. 
Um, so I'll wait so, till it's turned to do yeah, that. Yeah, it's not okay. a passive thing. It, it has to okay. take an action. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's going to be. So we'll we will say that's what you did. That will will we'll drop back into initiative order now. So you did that as your turn, uh, Callie. It's now your turn. All right. So uh, Callie's going to be like, nice. And uh, uh, so there's that giant pit in front of us. Um, are the labyrinth walls like? Are they up to the ceiling essentially? Yeah. D and D Jordan Lee, thanks for the raid. Hey, hey thanks. thanks. Welcome, you. everybody. Welcome. Uh um, Callie's gonna see if she can find a way um to I guess she's gonna chill while she waits for I guess well, she'll walk. Go ahead. So uh, Lysandros also says to her, he's like, remember it's it's not a real pit. If if you want to jump over or anything while it's like trying to deal with it. Like, it's not going to stop you. It's just going to hopefully stop this thing from thinking it's, you know, has fair, full reign to True. get to us. True. All right. So she's going to put her shield up and, like, pull out her sword. And then she's going to make a show of, like, jumping back across. Um, actually... She she won't even do that. She'll she'll look at the wall next to it, and because because she has the mask, um, what is it? The mask of the mask of Arrestus that you got in the last season. Yeah, that functions yeah. like a slippers of spider climb. So you can yes. you can walk on walls with it. I can nice. parkour, and so she parkour. Parkour, parkour parkour, and so she she jumps up and like runs across the wall and lands and uh, gives a growl. And I don't think I am I allowed to also attack. Does yeah, I'll let you do it. Why not? Yeah. We're close to the end of the night. I kind of want this. To, I wanted it to be fun, and exciting. So, yeah, Great. go ahead and make your attack. So, Kaz going to Yeah, I think, I think you could because you're just, I mean, typically with that I spider frame, you're, you're walking. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, cool. So, Kelly is going to make, I get two attacks per, or two actions per attack. Okay. Attacks per action, too. There we go. Yeah, two actions <laughs> per, you get two attacks per action. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, here we go. I, I go to hit. Um, I get a 23 on the first one. That hits. And then on this next one, do I get to decide after I roll if I want to use my Bardic Inspiration? Uh, yes, but do your damage for the first attack first. Yes. All right. And so for that one, I deal 13 slashing damage. Okay. Um, let me just do one thing real quick. So as you yeah. slash at it, yes. uh, as you hit it, it was slashing damage. Acid comes spraying out of its body as you hit it, and you take no! nine points of acid damage. No! Okay. Oh. Now you want to make your second attack? What did you say? Now, now you can make your second attack. Uh, so, yeah, basically the way Bardic Inspiration works, um, once you've made the roll, but before I say if it's a failure or not, you can roll. You can add the Bardic Inspiration. So if you roll a 13 and then I give, I, I always usually give you the chance to do it because I think it's like, I don't want to make you waste your things you've got. So For sure. Okay. Well, Callie like kind of like, ah, and then she'll go for her second attack with that in mind so she slashes down like she typically does and then she'll go for her second one um let's see uh i'll use my bardic inspiration for this one so i got a 16 and i need to roll what is it a d8 yes d8 there we go Phew, uh so I got plus six. To so, it was so it was 16 plus six? Yeah, so. So 22. 22. Yeah, you hit. <laughs> uh, so 22, roll the damage. I got another 13. And uh, with this one, uh, Callie will do an unwavering mark. Um, so she does her special slash to it. And um, with that, it has to focus on her unless it wants to take extra damage and all of that. Okay. So. Okay. How much damage did you do? Uh, that one was 13 as well. 13. So it was 13. So it was 26, 26 total. total. Okay. Yeah. 26 cool. total. And um, 
It also has its speed reduced um, by 10 feet because okay. of because I'm a slasher. Okay. And you take nine more points of acid damage. Oh, this is great. This is great. I'm a slasher. All right. That is Callie's turn. Exactly it is now the Hydra's turn. And the Hydra is real focused on the creature that just ran up to it and hit it twice with their sword. Um, and it's going to make a lot of attacks against you because you're the only one fighting it. And everybody else ran away from it uh, and turned invisible and hid. And so... This is going to hurt. First one is a 24. Yeah. Yeah. That, that My AC is 18, so... Okay. That does... 14 damage. Okay. Uh, next attack. 28. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're at mm -hmm. 21 mm -hmm. damage. Where are you at right now? I'm at 27 health, and so I'm taking 21? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm at 6. Yeesh. Next attack. 26 to hit. 11 damage. Okay, Callie's now, down. Here's what's going to happen now. Because we're getting close to the end of the night. So I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit. <laughs> we're not going to go to death saves. Because Callie, this thing has two more attacks. And it could yeah. definitely do a lot of damage to you. Yep. Callie, you fall to the ground. And you feel yourself losing your breath. You feel your pulse stopping. You fall to your knees. And you feel yourself dying. Mm -hmm. The rest of your party tries their best to fight off this Hydra without the use of their fighter. But one by one, we see all of them die. We oh see Mara Fine's spell eventually fade out. It lasts for, I think, a minute for invisibility, or is it an hour? You're muted. Sorry, Mar Marfine, you're muted. Sorry, I had hiccups. So <laughs> How long does it really last? Is it a minute or an hour? Uh, I believe it's an hour. So for an hour, you find yourself hunted by this Hydra while the bodies of your friends lay in front of you until eventually you are revealed to it again and it is able to finish you off. And like your friends, you find yourself dying. And then there was a pause and the four of you suddenly find yourselves again, standing in that same temple room under the entrance to the labyrinth. And you remember the voice of the Oracle who said, you will leave when you complete it. Oh. And now you realize you will never be able to leave this labyrinth until you defeat it. I knew I wasn't dead there. <laughs> I, I, Some might I say wasn't gonna die. there is no escape. Okay, I thought like, that might play it. All right, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you hear the voice of the woman above go, do you want to try again? Do we really have a choice? No. Okay. And that Enjoy is where we're going to end show. tonight's episode. Nice. Oh, wow. We died today. Wow. <laughs> that was fun, though. Time loop time. Or not time loop. Yeah, you get yeah. it. We'll see how Callie's it just going to keep running I, in. Yeah. Someone has been playing some Hades. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There has. Um, I almost even did the song because it's like the the beat. All right. Nice. Uh, all right. <laughs> look, it's ancient Greece. There's a maze. Come on. What am I going to do? All right. Oh, yeah. So that is where we're at now. Y'all are trapped in an unescapable labyrinth. Uh, it's, it's, it's escapable. It, it, there is 100% a solution to this. I have a fun thing we're going to do for it next time. I'm not going to keep making you fight the, the same Hydra over and over again. That's very boring, but it's I'm excited about this. Uh, this was going to be a later in the season choice, but you all chose to go to the the the, the Minotaurs early. So I'm like, all right, we're doing the labyrinth now. All right, cool. 
Uh, this is great. Uh, I did not want to railroad you away from it. If you all seem really dedicated to going to the Minotaur, so I'm like, cool, <laughs> the Minotaur now, great. Uh, fun. Uh, <laughs> um, great. This is, I'm very, very excited. This is happening. All right. Uh, let's go around the horn and say where everybody can find you. And I'm going to see if we have any more. Uh, no, we don't have any more toasts to read off. So that's fine. Uh, let's start with uh, Jordan. Where can we find you? Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon, where you can find out about stuff I'm doing, uh, often things with the command zone where I work and, and do stuff. And uh, you can also check out some more of my TTRPG work on previous shows here on uh, Saving Throw. Uh, I was in Wild Cards and a show called Legacy and the former previous seasons of Dice X Machina and Broken Pack. There's a bunch so go back and watch some of those. It's all good content. All right. Joy, where can we find you? You can find me here on... Oh, I'm not muted. Okay. <laughs> not this time. Here <laughs> on... I'm not muted. <laughs> here on Twitch and on Twitter and everywhere else is Curious Joy, where I probably am talking about Final Fantasy XIV, because Inwalker comes out in November, and it's the only thing I can think about. Ooh. <laughs> Excellent. Ashlyn, where can we find you? You can find me on uh, Twitter as Ashlyn Rose, Instagram as RAR, it's Ashlyn. And you can probably hear me on YouTube on Enchantimals as Mara Mermaid. Ooh. And uh, you can find me this weekend over on twitch.tv slash Monarch Media, where we're playing Commander uh, for a charity for Alzheimer's. Um, oh, so I'll be on that, uh, from 12, I think I'm on at 1230 and we're raising money for a really great cause. So feel free to check that out. Excellent. And I am Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J Silverman on Instagram at Riley Silverman. Two big things for me, uh, this Friday, I will be on my first episode of the season of season two of Heartbeats on twitch.tv slash Ripley Improv. I'm returning as the role of Dr. Ashley Love, and I'm actually a series regular this season, so I'm really excited to be back and returning instead of just a guest star. And then also tomorrow is the release of episode two of Port Saga, the scripted audio drama Vampire the Masquerade story that I am part of. It's an audio podcast. Uh, it's like most podcasts. It's a podcast that is that is a scripted audio drama. And uh, I can now say that I am playing the role of Zelda, the Nosferatu primogen. And so mm -hmm. I am I am very excited. I got to bring in a little bit of my Velma flair. She's a little bit more mischievous than Velma, but it was very fun to kind of dig back into that part of my personality again. I don't normally get cast to play those kinds of roles, so it was very fun um, to get to do that. I had a lot of fun doing it. So that show premiered last week. Uh, I actually had, did not read any scripts that I was not in, so it was, it was really fun for me to get to listen to these shows and like try to figure the mystery out myself because I don't know the answer to the mystery. But it's a vampire murder mystery. It's called Port Saga. You can find it wherever your podcast apps of preference take you. And with that out of the way, uh, our last thing, um, well, actually our end of show reminder was that Gen Con is upon us, which is no longer true. So I don't think I have to read <laughs> that list, but just check out all the other awesome stuff that we have on the channel, all of our other fun shows. You can find those out there. Uh, I think Dom is fixing that information for me right now. And so I am just vamping for like a little bit of time to clear that out. Uh, I believe is Albert Soup happening on Sundays right now, Dom? <clears throat> Albear Soup on Sundays. What time? Two, two o'clock Pacific on Sundays. Albear Soup. Our friend Rich will take you through some really fun discussions about gaming. And uh, check that out. Like we said earlier in the show, uh, we are launching the Exploration Society coffee uh, thing. So check that out as well. And uh, with that, I think I will bid you all adieu. And so you all have an excellent night and a pleasant tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.